It's that time in proceedings for me to introduce the guest speaker and as mentioned earlier we have the District Governor Peter Schaefer um, here to speak to us today about all things Rotary within uh, his district. Um, there was a profile of Peter in the, uh, in the bulletin which I won't go through in detail, you had read that at your leisure but basically Peter is um, a member of the Rotary Club of Alice Springs although I believe uh, Peter's got a property near here in the Adelaide Hills that uh, takes up some of his time and is uh, one of his perhaps uh, current passions. Um, Peter's got a background in Royal Australian Navy like my son so 21 year military uh, history perhaps a little bit longer than that uh, in the Navy um, then in 2000 he's um, changed his uh, lifestyle and, and entered uh, what do you call, well I've choices that I wouldn't choose to go and live in I guess in Aboriginal communities in uh, remote parts of Australia and the Northern Territory. Um, joined Rotary International in 2003 uh, in the Northern Territory, Nulunbai, is it? Yeah. And then the following year moved to Alice Springs. So Rotary, when you get to be a district uh, governor, becomes an integral part of your life. Um, and so he's, uh, I guess, at that pinnacle now with um, a district uh, 9500. And uh, I just ask Peter now to come forward and uh, share, with his, us, share with us his views of Rotary and uh, how he sees the, the year ahead for him. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. Um, yeah, it's true. Rotary becomes very integral to your life. In fact, it becomes very over-consuming. Recently, um, I went to a, um, well, my brother's birthday, actually. Recently turned um, 72. But I realised that was the first time in about six weeks that I'd done something social that was not around Rotary. So, um, yeah, it was quite, quite interesting. So... Ladies and gentlemen, it's my priv privilege to present to you. Um, as you'll know, I hail from Alice Springs and the geographical isolation of Central Australia uh, became very apparent to me on the onset of my DG journey some two years ago. Um, and I've been on a steep learning curve ever since. Being a Rotarian in Adelaide is vastly different than being a Rotarian in the country or in the desert. Here you get to engage in the bigger Rotary. Uh, you can trip out to the airport, you can say goodbye or welcome exchange students. You can travel to, uh, to dinners or um, other events such as um, fundraisers for Romac, for instance. <coughs> um, you can take a hands-on role within district activities and be part of committees and affairs. I'm sure you appreciate where I'm coming from this, with this. Uh, our Rotary is a very, very big Rotary. At the leading Rotary Now training events that were held across the district earlier this year, I presented my vision as DG. It was a draft, and those present were given the opportunity to workshop my aims and report back on whether they felt it was suitable, achievable and supportable. Other than some wording issues, my vision was endorsed by those there, and it's no longer a draft. In summary, and in no particular order, my vision, or now as I refer to it, our vision, is to continue a co cohesive relationship between the clubs and the district, to support the call by the RA pre RI president for en environmental projects such as tree planting. I see membership as a continuing priority for clubs and the district, to support to become more, a more diverse and inclusive Rotary through an increase in underrepresented groups to view engagement in project, projects as a priority over meeting attendance and also to measure volunteering. For clubs to engage in at least one international project and to use grants to compound its effectiveness. To do local projects and exploit these as opportunities to promote Rotary and to embrace the challenges and opportunities that lead up to, uh, sorry, in the lead up to a new district in 2020. So now, at the eve of change and the opportunity of growth, we'll build upon the good work that's already been done throughout the district over the years. 
As you know, government, business, industry, in fact all sectors of our global community and also our society here in Australia are advancing through change. Look at the changes that we've seen in the last 20 years just locally here. Rather than list some, I'll just ask you to reflect upon them. But things like our phones have gone to mobile phones and now they're personal devices. Our computers and laptops are now an integral part of how we enjoy communications. GPS and Google Maps, shopping, you can do it now, you can do it anywhere and at any time. TV on demand, and the list goes on. The changes are immense. Rotary is changing, and clubs have the licence from Evanston, or our main body, to do so. Where the clubs remain in the past, they will be a thing of the past. Those that grasp the opportunity to change and reflect the positive aspects of our contemporary culture will be the ones that will be here in the years to come, making that difference. Clubs such as yours. I'd like to comment on how progressive you guys have been over the last few years, and I commend you for that. The introduction of change for, for our clubs is much harder to effect than those changes opposed upon us by the likes of the banks and the corporations. Where clubs drive this change, it needs vision and leadership at the least, and it requires to be undertaken with engagement and steady incremental steps where members are involved and embraced in the journey. I understand that this is your story, an involvement from grassroots, having a say and an engagement within the process. This leads me to the change that we're on the eve of, the amalgamation of two districts. This is happening and it will be happening in three years' time. And it is envisaged that a joint district committee will be formed to oversee our respective districts, develop into a large body, both geographically and in club numbers. By virtue of this geography and club numbers, we will most likely need to go about the business of managing our district in a different manner than we currently do. It's not a daunting prospect, it's actually an opportune time for the district to reinvent itself and district management to reinvent itself too. To put our money where our mouth is, to show that we too will change for the advancement of Rotary in our little corner of the world. Our transition team has a huge responsibility to get it right. And it will take the right individuals with the right approach to develop a robust yet flexible organisation that will take us into the future. Without us as individual Rotarians losing our identity and purpose in the community. My vision is for a phased or incremental move to combine our operations rather than implement a whole new structure on the 1st of July 2020. Some areas like the Rotary Health Foundation have already, done, done got, <coughs> excuse me, have already gone down this track um, through a path of um, efficient rationalisation long before the amalgamation was announced. I encourage each of you to embrace the changes both within your clubs and broadly across the two districts. Without this, we risk withering away into insignificance and there are many folk out there who benefit so much from what we do and what we give. Let's continue in making a difference and continue year after year. I'll go out on a limb here. There are some very important and influential people in this room. But the truth is, we are ordinary people, jointly achieving extraordinary things, impacting positively on the lives of our less, less fortunate people of this world, making a difference. It's noted, it's appreciated, and it is needed. The message out of RI is the same as always. It's got a focus on polio, the foundation, and membership. Not to take away from the importance of these, but we've heard this for so many years now that I believe their relevance is ingrained in our psyche. We know this and we do this instinctively. Regarding polio, it is estimated that about a further $1.5 billion will be needed to see the issue knocked on the head. $1.2 billion was recently pledged at the convention in Atlanta, including a new commitment from the Gates Foundation to engage with Rotary to the tune of $50 million on a uh, two-for-one upsizing. The remainder was pledged by governments and other NGOs and organisations from around the world. 
leaving us approximately $1.3 sorry, $0.3 billion to, um, to meet that goal. And I think that's something Rotary can do. Additional focuses for the year are, though, um, trees. President Ian has asked for a tree to be planted for every Rotarian. That's 1.2 million trees, or if we include our rotor actors as we should, it'll be 1.5 million trees. To this end, Bob Cooper, my counterpart from District 9520, just on the other side of the river, um, and I approached the management committee of Calprom Station to see if there was a partnership opportunity there. The result is the Risley Forest. It's where a contribution of $5 will see a tree grown from seed, it planted and watered for the following two years. Additionally, you can engage in a club project at Cowprom to, to help out and put the tree into the ground. Just imagine getting some dirt under your nails. How rewarding. I'd encourage your club to seek other opportunities here also, to engage local conservation and land care groups. Seek out a playground or a similar place that needs vegetating. It's an easy way to make a lasting difference. This leads me to the district conference, and a very poor segue, I know. But at the conference in March next year, we'll also be giving you the opportunity to plant trees. For the first time, the district is partnering with District 9520 to have a combined conference which will be held in March in the Barossa Valley. And we're having some hands-on projects there. That's for those who have already done the wineries, or the winery crawl, whoops, sorry, we'll call it the winery tours, um, and have had enough of those. We've arranged for a planting of a Rotary Avenue, another chance to get your fingernails dirty. Other hands-on projects include the assembly of mechanical hands for landmine victims in Southeast Asia, and the preparation of birthing kits and days for girls bags. The latter three will be done in the public arena in Barossa Valley there, near the Tourist Information Centre. And it'll be an op opportunity for us to engage the locals and probably some tourists, and hopefully some media to exploit the event and to promote Rotary. There are two other focus areas for us here in Australia. Trachoma 2020, and also the Purple House. The Purple House is an NGO dialysis service providing outre outreach dialysis to the indigenous population in remote Australia. Trachoma was initiated by the Rotary Clubs of Melbourne and St Kilda, and, in, and, <coughs> excuse me, and the project is endorsed by Ian Risley, and is currently being developed a project to reduce the incidence of trachoma, which is a third world issue affecting the eyes, which is unfortunately prevalent here in our Australian desert regions. They've engaged a paid project worker, an optometrist with significant third world experience, to manage this project. The clubs are being asked to get on board and, to, and I encourage you to look up these projects on the web. They're both great ideas where you can become engaged in our region to address the issues of impoverishment and to improve the lives of our less advantaged Indigenous population. Your club has considerable representation in district matters and I commend you for your support at this level. David Egan, sitting at the front here, he will be engaging on the Governor journey in the next year and he'll be standing here talking to you about his plans next year. Several others, you, others of you are engaged with district communities, sorry, committees and district roles. I thank you for your engagement with the district. Rotary is changing, but remember that the fundamentals, our values and our focus, remain the same. You're a very active club and you've embraced change. I encourage you to keep up the great work. Thank you, let's keep making a difference. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Peter. That's uh, a nice broad uh, coverage of what's happening in Rotary and some new things happening, that's great. Um, now is time to open the floor to questions of Peter about uh, whatever comes to mind. Uh, I've got first question, the, the trachoma project, is that is that through uh, what particular vehicle? Because it's been discussed amongst our own at board level and so forth, whether we'd start our own project, but you're suggesting 
there's already a structure established for other clubs to participate in. Is that correct? That is correct. There's been some marketing and PR um, around being organised through um, the Trachoma 2020 group, so driven out of Rachel Club of Melbourne and St Kilda. At this stage, they have engaged the three Rotary Clubs of Alice Springs um, as, let's call it, partners in developing the program and working out how best um, Rotary can assist in eradicating the disease. Um, that said, it's not a, a, an absolutely um, curable disease. It, will, it can always reoccur. Um, for those of you who are not aware what it is, if you've seen the ads on television where um, Fred Hollows restores the sight to some people, it's just the removing of scar tissue from across the eye. Um, so it's, it's a result of poor hygiene um, and they're trying to work out how, to, to, how Rotary can be involved and make a difference in that area. Um, that said, there's already um, a considerable amount of NGO and government um, involvement here with advertising programs for you know, face hygiene, washing your hands. Um, it's being rolled out through the schools and so on and so forth. So, um, to be honest, I can't see how Rotary can make a significant difference in this arena. But, um, as I said, they've engaged a project manager um, and who has a lot of experience in, in third world eye health. Um, so, she may be able to come up with, with something. So, I just sort of basically say, watch this space at this stage. Um, and it's something that's a rollout over the next um, three to four years. Okay, just a moment. Adriano, you got a. Uh, Jason, Adriano's got a question? Okay, so the, as I mentioned, the plan is to assemble some uh, mechanical hands. Um, those hands are um, something that takes about two to three, teams of two or three people um, to put together. Um, I don't know how much exposure you've had to them, um, but they, um, they change the lives drastically of those people that have lost their hands, mostly through landmines in Laos, Cambodia and those countries. Um, the plan is to um, have the assembly of those kits um, or units available um, at the conference and uh, we thought, well, each hand costs $500 to, um, to sponsor or to, to bring, to make up as such. And um, I've approached uh, the club at the meeting here um, to underwrite um, as such um, a district grant where we will apply for the funds um, across and also nine five, District 9520 will do the same to match it but so we can raise um, all up $5,000, which will be 10 hands, for assembly um, at that event. And the club has um, gratefully um, accepted my challenge to do so. So thank you. Right. Any other questions? No? Oh, Rob. Um, just a moment. Reg has got the phone, uh, the uh, phone, microphone. It's registering uh, your, your volunteer hours and also um, anything that's been uh, provided to the club in kind. Uh, for example, a, a donation for a roof climb here, for instance, uh, to put a dollar, on, dollar value to it. Um, it's, um, they're collecting it through the uh, My Rotary database, which is the Rotary database. Um, at this stage, um, it's not clear what constitutes volunteer hours and what doesn't. So does a meeting at this you know, at this venue constitute that or not? Um, is it the behind the scenes hours um, of, of putting something together or is it only just the upfront coal face type thing? Um, I am seeking, I have actually written to, um, uh, to Chicago, um, seeking their clarification on that, uh, waiting for that to come through. Um, the reason for it is, is so that they can quantify uh, when Rotary goes out to its major um, sponsors, such as the Gates Foundation and many other philanthropic organisations, 
so they can quantify the work globally that Rotary does and, and happily put their hand on their heart and say, look, this is the big difference that we make in the world and you should be part of this. So it's a, a marketing and PR tool. Um, the other side of it is, is that um, it is believed that Chico uh, sorry, um, polio will be coming to an end, hopefully this year, um, which will then mean another three years of continued support beyond that, possibly even more. Um, but Rotary is seriously looking at, uh, one, gaining a lot of PR mileage uh, when that announcement's made, so it's not just the Gates Foundation and the World Health Organisation that get a pat on the bag, but Rotary does too. Um, but also looking for what could be the upcoming project to replace it, or even should there be a, a project to replace it. Um, I know when we were in um, San Diego earlier this year for governor training, uh, we were, we meaning all 540 around the world governors, were, were asked what we would see would be the, fo um, the follow-up uh, on this. Most of us um, from um, Australia and New Zealand um, and the Pacific region um, suggested that uh, polio, uh, sorry, um, malaria was an area, although it's not eradicatable, um, but it is a disease where, or an, or an affliction where um, just something simple like you know, nets over your beds at night can make a big difference to, um, to people's lives. So that's on that front. Peter. Peter, uh, in your survey <coughs> that the club did a couple of years ago, one of the key things Thank you very much. All right, Qu Adriano has a question. Uh first thing that came to mind was being subservient servers of the district. But that's the very wrong answer. No, no, not at all. Um, what do I see your role in the district? Um, look, you're already providing um, a lot of people to assist at district level. Um, and I think that's, um, as I said earlier, very commendable. I'd like to see, broadly, clubs engaging other clubs. And I think you're in a great opportunity to do that because you've, you've embarked successfully on making um, a change to the way you do business. Um, and I think um, you can provide some insights to other areas, uh, other clubs that, that, uh, that may want to venture down that, that same path. Um, as pointed out when we did meet out the back though, that some clubs don't have the ability, the, the corporate knowledge um, that your club possesses um, through its, its industry contacts, etc., cetera, um, to, to then instigate those changes. Um, and as I said, it's much easier to, to take change when it's imposed upon you rather than um, invent the wheel, so to speak, um, and look to risk being, being caught out for saying the wrong words. But some of the, some of the clubs, they're people that are, that are farmers, who, don't, who haven't dealt in change management um, and how to reinvent the way they do but to maintain the core of what they do. So I think the corporate knowledge that you guys have and the experience can, can lead them down that path and that would be a great thing. The other thing I'd ask is that um, with the amalgamation of the, of the two districts, um, it's not been finalised by any means but my plan is that there would be a, an overriding... Um, subcommittee of, of the two districts management teams um, and they would be steering um, the amalgamation process 
um, everything from the, the wind-up of the, the two uh, corporations to creating a new corporation, um, developing the structure um, and working out um, how the programs across the two districts will amalgamate into the one district because I'm, I'm acutely aware that the way 9520 goes about its business is very different than the way 9500 does. And there, um, so I suppose if there's skills and attributes within the club here, everything from conflict resolution to just laying out Gantt charts or whatever it may be, project management, um, please wave your hand around because we may be able to use your services. Thank you. Now, any further questions? Rob, you've got another one, have you? No, no. Good to recognise some of the people that are actually from this club. Oh, if I can, if I can. I can. Highlight it, but I think oh, it's good. good because people put a lot of time and effort <coughs> to pay down this one. And we don't, as our, our club, I don't think a lot of people in this club know who those people are. Would you like to make comments I, as to who they are? I can, I can. So I suppose if you're saying a lot of people don't know who they are, yeah. I suppose if you either stand or put your hand up. Um, Peter Neal is on my district management committee, so he's very much hands-on. You know who he is, <laughs> exactly. Um, our district treasurer, Stephen Noble, comes from this club, um, as does um, my newspaper, or my DG's newsletter editor, Meg Hona, um, and also, well, we did have Liz Hempful um, assisting us with Ryder, but that's changed. Um, we have Kay Dowling assisting with uh, club and district administration and we also have Brian Harris who's running the international service. Is there anybody I've missed out? Oh, John, the photographer, of course. Yeah, well, Dar yeah, Darcy's on a subcommittee with membership, yes. Yeah, it's your district. We're just we're just your puppet. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Peter, for that. Um, there being no many more questions, I'd, it's normally the custom to hand you a, a mem memento. Well, no, it's usually a rotary pen, but <laughs> I think we can dispense with that today. Thank you very much.